Hello everybody, this is Mark with Shadow Wolf Designs, and today we are going to be covering another feature of Lightwave, and that is animation modifiers. So we're going to be putting in one animation modifier, we're also going to be doing a circular camera movement around our object using uh, parent. I showed you guys in a previous tutorial how to do a null so you guys should remember how to do that if not you can refer back to that tutorial um, I'm gonna show you guys how to parent your your camera to your object this time so first step is to make your model obviously um, I made a little gold pocket watch something you'd see in a if somebody was getting hypnotized or something like that you can make a pendulum because we're going to be work I'm going to be working with the oscillate tool um, but a pendulum grandfather clock which is also has a pendulum in it um, a a fan head when it's turning back and forth um, let's see what else do we got a swing set because those oscillate but basically a movement that goes back and forth so first step is to set your starting position now I've already set my starting position here so um, because it started at zero and I've already played around so I know how how much mine's gonna go so I'm gonna hit negative twelve because that's where I want my starting position to be okay the next step to actually put in your oscillation is to go to properties Oh, I apologize, not properties. Um, with your object selector, you're going to hit M on your keyboard. And that brings up this. Now, I already have the, an oscillator put in, and you see my settings there. And if I hit continue and hit play, you'll notice it swings. It's a little slow, but let's take this out and edit remove and we're gonna put it in again and it's in the, this bottom section you're gonna click add modifier and you're gonna scroll down until you see oscillator and now to actually use it you're gonna double click on it by default it starts in position X with nothing enabled so I'm using the bank which is down here this is the B it's the blue so click bank and click enable now right now it won't really do anything because the wave size the offset nothing's been affected I'm gonna do 10 cycles set my ending frame to 300 that way it oscillates the whole time and I'm gonna crank up my wavelength or my wave size I'm gonna go to 12 and I'm gonna set my offset to 12 too now that's just, I know those numbers because I played with it, just play with it. Don't be afraid to play with stuff in Lightwave. Save before you do in case something happens. But with this especially, you got to play with it. Otherwise, I can't just give you a number that's going to work. you, you got to play with it. I had to play with it to make sure I got it to work right. Phase, you'll see this adjusting this actually moves this. So you can sort of set up where you want it to start. So if you want it to start at the bottom, you can do that. Or if you wanted it to start at the top. I want to have it start at the bottom. And then this dampening, it's almost like real physics. Where um, you see how it slowly loses momentum over time. So I'm going to hit continue now and we're going to test this out. And this is a problem, it's going way too slow. So I'm going to go back into oscillator, I'm going to decrease this. I'm going to turn this wavelength back down to say 2. And we're going to see if that helps. And that does not help. So we're going to increase this wavelength back to 12. Let's try decreasing this one. And like I said, this is all about playing with it.
This is still moving a little bit slow, which works fine for something like a swing set. Obviously, this pocket watch would be moving a little bit faster. So I'm going to bring that back down even further. I'm going to bring this dampening down because I don't like it dampening that much. So you're noticing it's moving a little bit faster, but it's also not the offset. It's not going quite as far as I need it to. So I am going to have to go bump that back up. So offset 12. And let's bring this cycle time. We'll bring that back down to 1. There we go. So your cycle time is actually how long it takes to do one cycle. So actually, I'm going to bump that up to 3. And now let's see what it does. And that's an actual decent one. Just going back and forth, back and forth. And we'll hop into our camera mode so we can see. And that actually doesn't look half bad. We'll go into VPR. Obviously it's not rendering completely, which I'm not worried about because it's actually moving. Okay, hop out of VPR. So, now we have our animation in there. And we only had to set up one keyframe. And that was the very start, one at the very start. And we just went back and forth. Alright, so, next thing to do is parent your camera. So, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to parent my camera to my object. So we're going to, with the camera selected, we're going to hit the M key. And this parent item is going to be the pocket watch. And for my case, um, I'm still going to do a target on the pocket watch. which I do not like because you notice that it actually targets the top of the pocket watch which is where my my uh, pivot point is so I'm actually gonna cancel that and I'm gonna cancel both of these just set them back to none and I'm gonna put a null in here and I'm gonna come out to about 25 where it's about center okay and then I'm going to just put in a null. And we're going to use the space bar to get back to the movement tool. Bring this down. And I never left the point of origin on here. So it's I just had to bring it down. Now I'm going to select my camera again. Open up your motion options with the M key. Target it to the null parent it to the null. Now, the awesome thing about this, and I screwed up, so make sure when you do any adjustments, oh, you notice I was at 25 when I moved the null down. So, by default, this is what your timeline looks like. You see a few little dotted lines here. If you click on those, it opens up the top half of this. And that lets you click and drag and you can select multiple keyframes. But it also lets you move your keyframes. So if you highlight and select one, you can drag it over. And there we go. Now, now that the camera is parented and targeted to the null, what we can do is we can just affect the null parenting is what allows us to do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out here to 300 and then I'm gonna I know I want it to rotate on this axis right here this red one so our I forget what that's called so I'm just gonna look it up and by doing I'm gonna look it up with our pocket watch and going into the oscillator because we can just do that Heading is what it's called. 
but it's the H, it's the red. Easy way to remember it. But we're gonna go on our null, we're gonna get back to rotation. And we're gonna, at 300, I'm gonna put this at 360. So this actually does a full rotation. So if I go into camera view, you got the dark side of the watch. Now if you're doing a rotation like this, which is what is desired, a circular camera movement around your object. Now that means you're going to have to do something, you're, you're going to either need a room with four walls, or you're going to need an outdoor setting with a f complete sky dome, which means the regular sky dome that you guys have been using with the half sphere is not going to work. So, I would suggest for this assignment, doing it in a room, unless you already have a 360 Sky Dome set up. But, this has been your tutorial on how to set up parenting and oscillation as an animation modifier. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, subscribe. If you want to see more, subscribe. And, have fun. I'll see you next time.